try not to break any fingers. I bought a pair of the indestructible shoes to see if they are actually indestructible or if they're just a cheap gimmick. So I've got a video coming up in a couple weeks of how to resole a pair of Common Projects or any of the other white sneaker brands that use a Margham sole, uh, but I don't have a pair of worn out Common Projects. So if you got a pair and you want me to resole them, hit me up on Instagram and uh, I'll resole them for you for free. So I can actually have a resole for that video. And it's, it's probably gonna be a loud video today. We're running a little behind on um, production. So we're working late on production and there's yard work going on outside and there's also a drive through right outside. So I can't wait to get into the new shop. Now let's get to the shoes. So these are the indestructible shoes or at least one version of them. I got these off Amazon and there's tons of different places you can buy them under tons of different names. These ones in particular are the brand Etsy, E-D-S-Y. The model is 703, the color is green. Uh, they retail for $45 and it doesn't really say where they're made anywhere, but I think it's a pretty fair assumption to guess that they're made in China. Um, and like I said, there's tons of different brands, but I think they're probably all made in the same factory. So this, this review should be pretty universal for all the different places you can buy these shoes. And if you don't know what these shoes are, um, we must be in two completely different demographics because I see these, like the ads for these nonstop on all the different social media platforms. They're the shoes that, and I'll just put like some of the screenshots of them stomping on nails and running them over and doing all sorts of crazy stuff to them. And there's already quite a few reviews out there of people recreating the tests that you see in those advertisements. Um, so I don't want to do those just over again, and but I still want to do them. So we ran it over the car, the steel toe worked fine. We st stood on a group of nails, worked fine, though it was quite scary. They are twistable and bendable, and they do weigh less than a pound. And so instead of going really in depth into those, I want to try some different tests that maybe will give us a little, more, little bit more quantifiable data, though not the most scientific, it's still better than nothing. So there's two main things I want to get from this video. The first one is I want to see how these are built and how strongly they're built or how well they're, they're built. So we're going to tear the layers apart and kind of see what's inside, see how hard it is to tear apart. And then the second thing we're going to do is attempt to put some numbers behind how puncture resistant the outsole is and this Kevlar midsole is. So let's start with kind of dissecting this shoe first before we do the test. Okay, I got it all torn apart. So let's go through the layers, starting with the insert or insole. So just a EVA foam insert, pretty cheap, nothing much to it. Then we go down to the Kevlar layer, which the first half of it came out really easy. It was actually already loose, so I pulled out most of it, and then I had to cut the vamp to get the rest of this out, because right where the, the steel toe rolls underneath, it was really well um, glued together. Next layer down, I guess would be the, the, the steel toe. So I cut this off separately rather than cutting on the bandsaw uh, for a couple reasons. The first reason is I didn't want to try cutting through Kevlar with my bandsaw. That just sounded like a disaster waiting to happen. Um, the second thing is I, I didn't want to try to cut through the steel toe without being able to test it um, just to see that it's a steel toe. So this will give us a nice platform to be able to test the steel toe on, hopefully. Then next layer down, we've got the outsole. So this thing is surprisingly thin. For as many people are stomping around on nails um, in the advertisements and other reviews, including myself, this is uh, a lot thinner than I expected it to be. 
It's around four millimeters thick and it just feels like um, a typical, I don't know, my guess is PVC. It doesn't really say, it doesn't say on the advertisements or in the listing anywhere, but it feels really similar to the PVC soles in the Doc Martens, so that's my best guess. And I don't think this is very puncture resistant. I thought this was gonna be at least two or three times the thickness to give it some puncture resistance. So I think all of that uh, puncture proofness comes in the Kevlar, but I guess we'll see. And then next is the upper. I'm guessing a polyester knit fabric. The one thing I was really concerned about when I was cutting this open was I was, I was hoping it was really hard to tear the upper from the sole, which it was, because a lot of times in a cheaper pair of shoes, the upper you can just basically peel it off and it's a good sign that the shoes are only gonna last a short amount of time. But with these, it was really hard to tear apart. I had to get the channel locks out to pull it apart. Another potentially bad thing was this Kevlar midsole is really um, small. My concern would be if I was relying on this shoe for actual puncture resistance, that a nail would hit the side of the shoe, miss this Kevlar midsole, and end up hitting my foot. So uh, that's, that's kind of a big concern of mine. We'll see if this outsole is actually puncture resistant at all. Um, but if not, that's kind of scary. And then I also want to take a durometer uh, measurement on this outsole. And if I puncture it in there, it comes to about 14 to 12 range, which is even softer than the Margum outsoles, which is probably is not going to be great for puncture resistance. So now let's move to the puncture resistance tests that are going to be super scientific. And there is equipment out there that tests this, but it's super expensive. And I'm trying to get to a point where I can afford that equipment because it'd be really cool to get some numbers on different aspects of shoes and boots and puncture resistance and strengths and materials. But until that point, we're just gonna have to kind of wing it. So for this test, I think I have a, an okay solution. So this is, this is a coin ring kit where I should be able to cut a circular patch of whatever material I'm trying to puncture test, the Kevlar midsole and the outsole. So what this will allow us to do is put this inside of this and put the cap on top, which will press down on that swatch equally, hopefully, everywhere but the hole. So that when we put this die in here and put pressure on it, that's, that swatch isn't gonna slip in. It should hold it pretty tight and give us a good measurement of how much force it takes to actually puncture through. Okay, after playing around with it for a little bit, I think I've got a test that's gonna work enough. Got a nail in a two by four, but it's set deeper inside the two by four. This two by four is hopefully gonna give us an equal, uh, a more level and more distributed platform to hopefully push on this nail with equal force without bending it one way or the other. Okay, then we've got a couple guides here that are going to help prevent too much slop back and forth and hopefully give us as straight of a press as possible. Okay, now let me show you the testing setup. Okay, this is the testing apparatus, the testing setup, the testing jig. So, two ton engine crane hooked up to a little crane scale. The, and then this is an early 1900s dental lathe, basically a grinder for dentists. It weighs 48 pounds. So, in theory, and in previous tests, I can put this here, put the nail and the board underneath, slowly lower this, and see how much change there is in the weight, which will give us a rough estimate of how many pounds it takes to pierce through. All right, first test, we got this little circle of the outsole, pop that into our Rig here, get it in there like that. Screw our top on and make sure this one's really tight because this one out of all of them has the most opportunity to stretch. Pop our guides in, line it up. Now attempt to guide this baby in. I'll try to guide it a little more from the top this time. Go to the playback to see what happened. So after reviewing 
the playback footage. It looks like it takes just about all 48 of the pounds that we have available with the dental lathe. So that means we're gonna have to have a beefier setup for the Kevlar, I'm guessing. Okay, on to the Kevlar test. Get this popped in there with my setting tool. And I, I don't think this is gonna push through. So I got this 12 pound piece of steel that will give us at least a few more pounds. This is not gonna work, but it's worth a try. All right, here we go. Try not to break any fingers. Well, that's all the 48 pounds plus the 12 pounds. And that's not piercing through. Let's look at the piece of Kevlar though. So the Kevlar after the test, pretty big dent in it, but definitely didn't go through. So I think next what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna try standing on it and see if I can even get it to go through. Cause that'll give us maybe a place to go off of to see how much weight it's actually gonna take and see if it's even feasible to pierce through this on this video. All right, we got a fresh swatch of the Kevlar, the alleged Kevlar. So we get this popped in here, cap on nice and tight, put our guides in. I'm just gonna try standing on it to see if 185 pounds will pierce through this. So, that definitely went through. That was pretty close to all my weight. So, not the most scientific tests ever done by man, but, Interesting results nonetheless. So now that we're done with our super scientific testing, let's go through and kind of talk about the results. So the Kevlar pierced pretty easily under my weight and that leads me to, to have a little bit of worry if I was wearing these shoes and I was under the impression that if I did step on a nail that I'd be safe because I don't think you would be. You know. It, all of your weight on a single nail, I think this would pierce through and have a chance of getting into your foot. Especially with the size of the midsole like we talked about earlier, if it missed that completely, you'd be done for because the outsole only took 45 pounds-ish to pierce through and that's barely a quarter of most people's weight. And that's kind of scary. As for the overall shoe, I think if you're planning on using this shoe just as like a shop shoe where you want a little bit of extra pro uh, protection just in case something goes horribly wrong. It's not a bad choice for $45, but there's way better shoes out there. And I think you'd have to go into it knowing that there's a chance that it could go catastrophically wrong. You know, we didn't, I ran out of time to test the steel toe. I really wanted to test it, but it's Tuesday night. This video comes out Wednesday morning, tomorrow morning. So I'll probably save this steel toe test for maybe a, another video where we go a little bit more in depth on steel toes and maybe get a group of steel toes and test them on some better testing equipment because this was far from scientific. So if, if this wasn't educational, hopefully at least it was entertaining because it was fun to do even though I'm drenched in sweat now. And uh, it makes me really want to get some real testing equipment and I, I'm, after doing this, it, it kind of uh, makes me think that's where the future of this video or this channel is gonna go, where I can hopefully get some real world testing equipment and take as much bias and take as much opinion out of these things, kind of like um, Project Farm does, if you guys ever seen that channel. I would love to do that style of video with some real world testing equipment and really settle some arguments and opinions and make them as scientific as possible. So if you enjoyed this, um, consider liking, subscribing, and commenting so that we can afford to get some real testing equipment. So thanks for everything you guys do. See ya.